of the areas that you uh, people have commented most I think about your work has to do with your willingness to interject your own personality into your therapy and often your own vulnerabilities. Mm -hmm. I, I wonder if you could comment on that. Well, you know, I think that um, certainly as, as I've aged or perhaps uh, matured as a therapist, I've been more willing to to show more of my uh, uncertainty to the patient. You know, I think that, uh, that, that being uncertain is a large part of psychotherapy. It's a large part of life. And it's something that is quite uncomfortable for for us therapists, mm -hmm. and that uh, that many therapists really, I think, uh, involve themselves sometimes in a uh, uh, a carefully structured uh, educational therapeutic program. It almost is a way of uh, perhaps avoiding uh, facing, uh, dealing with, uh, acknowledging some of the uncertainty that comes with the therapeutic venture. Mm -hmm. So perhaps some of the things that I've been I've been willing to. Uh, to express and to acknowledge the patient have got to do with my own uh, my own not knowing, mm -hmm. or my own willingness to work with the patient, struggle with the patient, to sort of uh, for us to be allies together in the therapeutic venture. You, I'm interested in the term allies. I know mm -hmm. in one of the case histories you you wrote about you used the term uh, that was very important for you to treat your client as an equal which mm -hmm. seems in, in some ways to contradict the idea of a, a doctor and a patient it's not usually an equal relationship and, and yet the idea of an equal partnership does seem important as, as part of a therapeutic alliance yeah equal in that we're both uh, we're both uh, exploring together that it's you know I, I, I don't have a sense that I have a uh, uh, a, a tremendous uh, leap ahead of the patient in terms of what I know about where the patient has to go and what the patient has to discover. I think things work much better if there's a certain sense of spontaneity, the wonder of, of us both uh, discovering and exploring something together. Mm -hmm. And I think in the same way, perhaps, I, uh, I think that uh, perhaps self-revelation on the part of the therapist has is, is been quite important. and. Um, one of the things that I that I feel I've been willing to do with patients is to uh, engage in more of my own sort of feelings. There was a, a book that I wrote called Every Day Gets a Little Closer in which both the patient and I wrote summaries of the of each therapeutic session. It was a patient who was uh, s stuck in therapy and also was a, a good writer, a very good writer, but had a writing block. So it was a way of, of helping her get past the writing block I I suggested that we uh, that we each that she write a summary of mm -hmm. each of the sessions that we had and uh, I promised to do the same and then every every few months we exchanged summaries so she read mine I read hers and that was also a, an exercise in, in self-disclosure and it was a way to help her break through some of the oh idealized images that she had of me um, after uh, we did this for uh, for a period of time, a, a year and a half, and I think things worked very well in therapy. It seemed to me, as I used this these notes uh, with my students, that perhaps they might read almost like an epistolary novel. So we published them together, and it's very interesting to to take a look at the differences in perception the patient has of an hour and you have of an hour. It's a kind of a uh, of a Rashomon experience. Uh, you know all the the things that I value in the hour, these uh, elegant interpretations I made, I learned that she never really heard them. Mm -hmm. you know, and the things that she valued were the rather subtle, delicate, uh, personal things that went on between us that, that I hardly even that I hardly even registered. Yeah.